Pit Master here. I'm uh, sitting in my hotel room, beautiful downtown Indianapolis, Indiana. And it is a very interesting city, let me tell you. Let me tell you something. Remember? Fire Marshal Bill. Let me tell you something. Anyway, um, so we're here. I got to run into my BFF, Ricardo Laborio, on the elevator. I didn't even know he's here. So I get to hang out with him. Uh, let's see what's going on. Um, we got Castle Williams fighting this coming Saturday in Vegas. Uh, one of our fighters and also a gym owner of Pitt North in um, beautiful downtown Atascadero, California. Um, so that's what we got going on. Jim uh, is going great. Everything's going great. Our fighters. Um, working on a couple new things. One thing I'm doing is I'm dissecting the altercation as a whole and breaking it down and how you can train for different aspects of the alter altercation. Okay? And I broke it down this way. First thing you have is you have a potential altercation. Okay? Now from that potential altercation, you your number one your number one job for successful self defense is avoidance. Okay, you want to avoid the altercation however you can. Walk on the other side of the street. If it's a drunk in your face, turn around, walk away. Um, stay, park in a lighted parking lot. Um, whatever it takes, avoid the altercation. Then you, you win every time. Okay? Sometimes you can't. Okay? So number two is trying to defuse the altercation. The guy's already in your face. And he's getting nasty. You try to calm him down with words, body language, whatever it takes. You try to diffuse the situation. Sometimes, you know, being being firm with him, you know, back the fuck off. You know, showing him you have power might diffuse him. Sometimes it's making a joke and trying to, you know, come on, bro. You know, whatever it takes. You want to diffuse that situation. Okay. You don't want to get into an actual physical altercation. That's the last ditch. Okay, that's the last thing you want. Okay, so number one, avoid it. If you can't, and it comes, it's in your face. You try to diffuse it. Okay, now you can't. Okay, it's it's here. It's imminent. It's going to happen right now. Okay, the next step after diffusion didn't work is you do a preemptive strike. Okay, you want to hit first. You want to attack first because you're more successful that way. Okay, if the guy shoots first and you shoot second, if he gets his bullet in, you're not gonna win. If the guy stabs first and you stab second, you, you probably aren't gonna stab second. You're gonna be dead. Okay. Sometimes you need a preemptive strike. Okay, and self-defense says, you know, defending yourself physically against, you know, an immediate or imminent danger, and it's coming right now. So a preemptive strike. Okay, so we got, you couldn't avoid it, you couldn't defuse it, okay, preemptive strike. Okay, now that strike could win the fight for you and it could end it, or it might not, okay. He might get you first before you get the preemptive strike, then you have to go into defensive mode, okay. He grabs you for a body lock, you got to pop and lock, underhook, you got to get out, you got to elbow, there's all kind of different techniques we do from there, okay. Defensive, okay. So we went from preemptive to defensive, okay. That's that part of the, the the altercation, okay. Then that might work and it might end. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you get defensive, and now you guys are squaring off and it turns into a fight, okay. That's what we call the fight, okay. You know your hands are up. You're in a fight stance. You start throwing techniques. You want to end the fight as quickly and as safely as you can without injuries okay he gets injury if he gets injured you might go to jail okay you get injured you might go to the hospital it's a lose-lose so you want to try to end that fight as quickly as you can because out of the two you get hurt and go to the hospital he gets hurt and you go to jail you'd rather go to jail than go to ICU on a ventilator with a tracheostomy tube let me just tell you that 
Okay, so you got the fight. Okay, you want to end it. Okay, he doesn't want to end it, and it get, it's starting to get ugly. Okay, the next thing you want to do is the ending. Okay, you the finish. Okay, ground and pound and try to take him out so you can go home safely. Okay, that's that's the the worst case of the best scenarios, because the worst of the worst is you end up on the ground. He ground and pounds you, and like I said, you're hurt, dead, or you know, worse. I don't know what could be worse than death, but you know what I mean. Okay, so you wanna, at all costs, okay, you wanna avoid. Okay, you don't wanna get to the ground and pound. That's a lot of steps down there. But if you do and you end up winning the fight, or not winning really, because you had to do that. But now after that's over, the last, the last tier. The bottom tier of that is defending the self-defense. And that's, what should you say to the cops? Should you get a lawyer? You know, do you need witnesses? What are you going to say on the 911 call? Should you have your camera? Should you have your video going? Is there a surveillance camera in the, you know, in the Taco Bell that you got in the fight? I mean, there's so many things you got to think about in an altercation because sometimes you win, you win the altercation, you know, physically, next thing you know, you're going to be locked up. You're going to be sued. Civil court. Criminal court. You know, so there's all kind of different levels of this fight. And they are going to be list listed on my blog. So, just remember, avoidance is number one. That's your number one aspect of self-defense. And that, that, if you avoid a fight, you win every single time. Okay? Anyway, that's all I got to say. And I will talk to you guys later. Watch the fight this Wednesday on, I think it's Fuel or Fox. And uh, please read my blog and comment on it. And like me on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter. Pitt underscore Master. See you later.